Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. In this episode, we're gonna cut up our yard and reinforce it, make it stronger. We're also gonna move the attachment point from there to where that blue strap is and put some more reinforcing on the top as well as inside of it. And if you look down it, you may be able to see a bend. It's actually bent upwards on the ends, but with the sail hanging on it and being pulled up, it actually bends down on the end. So it's got a lot of strain in it. So I think I'll extend the doubler out a little bit here just cause I don't want that pad eye or the lifting point so close to the end and i happen to have a piece of pipe that'll do that down below and then i'm going to cut it in half lengthwise and get real creative inside now, a lot of people don't know it, but you can cut aluminum with any old carbide tooth blade yeah you're going to be hard on the blade i got a couple teeth missing there that's why it's jerking back on me more of it Oh, it's got enough life in it. I can finish this cut. So that's why I buy the cheap blades. That's a pretty serious cut. And when you lose a few teeth, it just gets a lot harder. So better just change the blade out and go to the next one. Aluma cut. This is the best disc I've ever seen for grinding through aluminum because it's impregnated with oil. Watch when I grind with it. You can see the oil that oozes out of it and it uh, makes a mess so you gotta clean it up really good before welding it but it grinds great because it doesn't clog up the disc it's hard on the disc too look at it eat it up but man does it cut aluminum oh yeah that'll do the bevel will help it get welded back on with a lot of penetration underneath it Okay, got a straight line, more or less, down the pipe. I'm using the painter's tape to find halfway around the pipe, so I try and get these two lines opposite of each other, so two marks on that. Line it up, go the other way. Paper works too, but painter's tape is really handy. So there's my two marks. Wow, they happen to line up perfectly. If they didn't, I'd just, you know, split the difference. Did really good. Well, that went well. I got to show you the splices down here. Here, that's the actual end of the pipes coming together where they're butt jointed. But this is the sleeve that was put in, and there was a slot cut in the outside pipe and the welded into this. You can see the end of that weld right there. And same thing over on this end here. That's the end of the weld. Now, on to stiffening this up. We're basically gonna make it like an I-beam. And I got this material at a local fabrication shop. And I got some 3 16ths and I got some quarter inch. I even got some 3 8 3 8 will be used for pad eyes if I need that. This stuff will uh, be used for stiffener. So the idea basically would be to um, weld it in like that, put them back together and weld the other half on. And I'm going to let it stick down below the yard and I'll drill holes through here and that's where the sail will get bolted on with its grommets. Rather than having you run bolts through it through the holes across the beam, I'll actually just weld those back up. Now we needed to spread the load on this. I put it in a prior video and suggestions were to make a bridle. That's probably the easiest thing to do, but I gotta have a lot of clearance. Bridles, uh, they lose strength quickly as they start to spread wider. And that's really relevant back here on the tender where the spread of that bridle right there makes a big difference. And so this angle here is more than 45. So this is not a bad bridle, but when you get this angle down low, it starts making this line have a lot of stress on it and here it would pinch the size of the boat in incredibly so a bridle works but you got to have this long distance here and i don't have that because it would get in the way before it got close to the top of the mast up there but i got an email from mr Yager in uh, holland uh, of the netherlands and he had built a uh, a gaff which is a lot like a yard it's a structure on the top of the sail that pulls the sail up and holds it out um and they use them on racing barges y yeah racing barges uh i love it you know there's a a lot of tradition of course with the dutch and sailing boats and they use these barges for you know commerce with sails on them before diesel engines and 
fantastically they still keep up and uh, race these barges so it's something else to see you know when you hear of it you think of uh, you know for me from Oklahoma I think of uh, racing school buses it's kind of the same thing isn't it all right so let's get busy cutting this down to size so this yard for the mainsail is about 25 feet long kind of looks like I'm working on a grill doesn't it so with the doublers that's about 60 feet and 24 tooth blade is still holding up noticeably duller but still there I thought I'd bring the table saw up and start cutting these plates but uh, no it's gonna rain instead but it is beautiful I grew up in the tropics and it's not too bad to get wet shoes in the tropics but here I you know I get tired of having wet cold feet and no, it's not really that cold, but I got myself my first pair of overshoes. Yeah, it'll work well. Lots and lots of grinding today. This is the edge that's going to stick out below the yard. So I'm going to round this edge over. It'll be the one that gets the holes drilled through it for taking the sail. And then this edge just gets a clean up so that it can be welded in. Hmm, what a gorgeous day. Just uh, laid down after lunch. Three hours later, I woke back up. It's just amazing, you know? Warm sun, cool breeze, nice rocking motion, full belly. Back to grinding. This thing is the uh, stiffener that's gonna go on the top of the yard to extend out the piece I already have there. Busy putting a dock in over there. That, that's a pump running that they use to jet the pilings into the bottom. And the carpenters over there have put a second story on, sheeted over the roof. Man, they're gonna have it watertight here in a few more days. Oh, that's beautiful. This is gonna be a gorgeous sunset. nice one definitely worth a Facebook share and you're welcome to join us on Facebook it's SV seeker it's a group and you have to be a real person with a real name and that's the only requirements and you have to be nice well good morning and uh, yeah it's really this foggy out isn't that beautiful though off to uh, get some welding wire what a gorgeous morning to be out. I think the cove is over there. No, no, totally wrong. It's over there. <laughs> well, not that Home Depot. It's not Tulsa. Tulsa is a town that, you know, we fabricate all kinds of stuff, but Foley, Alabama, that Home Depot, that, had, that was a terrible selection of welding supplies, so off to the welding store, that's what they got. Let's go, that looks promising. Yeah, they had it, but they can't refill my cylinders. I'll have to go up to air gas, get that done. Critical supplies and welding wire in tow, and we are back. Boat's out there somewhere. Looking good to me. But I'm running off the VMAC this morning. I got it on 48 volts, so it should be constant voltage. 
welder doesn't seem to care, but I'm told that's what I should use, so I'm using that. David Camp, I'm doing that for you. Make you happy. First thing to do is tack all this together. The original yard here had a curve like this, so it uh, it bowed upward on the ends because of all that reinforcing welding along the top there. And I've straightened that out a little bit by adding this plate, and that's the difference right there. You can see at the edge here, so it's not too much. I'll be able to pull that back down easy enough because I can't weld this on next. I got to do the butt joints. So my plan is to weld this all the way across, and then I'll grind out a little uh, notch here so when the second half comes in it can sit right up against this and sit on top of a weld. It's almost noon, the fog's finally burning off. We're gonna tack the other half on. Now I have a choice here. I could weld that plate in the center to this bottom half all the way down and then put this top half on. Uh, that would leave me an easier weld down inside here where I got the doubler. It's important to connect the top edge of that plate in here as well. It doesn't have to be done a lot, so if I get it some, I think we'll be good. And I'm gonna roll this thing up though so I can weld flat down into it. Boy, it's got to bow the other direction now, so I got to put a tack in the middle and then bend it back this direction. Yeah, the trick was just to do it in two steps. So the first weld, you know, went up against this edge on this side, and then I made a second pass on the other side. Now we got to figure out how to straighten out this sideways turn in it. Maybe just lay it on the ladder and pull down at the ends. Okay, what I've done is I've added a ratchet strap at this end, and it's holding this top height in proper alignment. Same thing at the other end. Then it goes over the top of the ladder and I'm pulling it down at this end and also another one way back over there. And I come a little bit more and I can take that sideways bow out of it. It really doesn't have much force on it at all. It's just barely pulling, which I think is good. All right, ready for some more tacks. I got some uh, long welds in on it now, about every uh, two, three feet. I released the tension again, it's still doing okay, so I'm gonna come back and put another set of welds in between these. Right in. Close the tensioner down, put the lid back on, feed some wire. Probably need a new tip, but we'll see what we can do here. Yep, that's okay. Ready to go. Flipped it over and it does have a slight upward bow, so I've supported it out at both ends. Board down here, ladder down there. I'll put a strap here in the middle to pull it down a little bit. Let it cool down, release it, see what it does, and then decide on the next step. To be completely honest, I need to cool down too. Well, I let the strap off and it didn't move hardly at all, so we're doing the right thing apparently. Now we're gonna do it some more. Okay, time to roll it over and do some on the other side. This day ended up just like it started. 
I finished all the welds on the other side. Now it's flipped back over and I'm gonna finish this side. Then once all the welds are done on the bottom, should be stiff enough, I can do the top. Kind of looks like a TIG weld when you do that. All I'm doing is pulling the torch forward and backing it up a little bit. And just running along in a straight line is fine. This just kills some boredom. Well, back up the mast today to change out for pulley. We're putting a pulley on this yard up here on the forward sail. That'll make it half as hard to pull up. And I'm also taking advantage of the opportunity to patch up some of the places where we, you know, this used to be a utility pole, so it had some sort of a fixture up here. We cut it away, put a patch in, so now that's got to be fixed up. Rush neutralizer first, and then come up here with cold galvanizing paint on the next trip, because there will be a next trip. And Robin and Deb came out to help me up this uh, fine day. And it, yeah, the sun came out. It's a beautiful day. Say hello, folks. Hello, hello folks. folks. <laughs> Well, Robin, Deb, and I got the forward sail rigged up, had a lovely lunch over at Pirate's Cove, and what we got is the two-to-one lifting advantage now. So the line starts off tied to the top of the mast. It comes down, goes through the pulley or sheave, and then back up the mast and across the two sheaves in the top of the mast, and then back down through the new cheek block welded to the side and on back into the pilot house. So what that means is we have twice the force lifting that yard on the forward sail, but we also have twice the amount of rope or line that has to come back in. So this is a longer higher that we've installed. So half the force, but twice as much line. There's a trade-off to everything. But it really does make it easy to lift. So finally ready to weld the top side of the mains yard. And that's gonna go slow because it has pretty good alignment now. So I've got it braced being pulled down in the center because when I weld it along the top, it's gonna make it wanna bend like this. A little bit of that's fine but we don't want it to get carried away. That's enough for today. It's taking on a bow to the side, but I think I can correct that. Doing this again, which is what I'd always like doing. Man, gorgeous sunset. So this morning I've uh, rolled it over on its side, and took the bend out of it by putting pull down force in the middle and it's braced on both ends here. So this bend that was here is now being flattened out. I don't think that'll help a lot, but it won't hurt any. The other thing about working on a boat is you can always be assured that the wind's going to be coming from the same direction. Always. So there's two passes down below and then one big cover pass. I got plenty of weld down below where the plate comes up and it meets the pipe. But this doubler here is giving me trouble. It's, I got a big gap in there and I can't fill it all the time. So taking advantage of a little scrap I have laying around, putting pieces of it in there so I don't have to put in quite so much welding wire. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Alright, the bulk of the welding is done. Grinding now to clean it up and then I still have to weld these bolt holes. But I'm going to keep them open because they mark where I need to drill the hole for the a sail attachment for the grommet. I almost forgot about the doubler. This is still. Well, it turns out this pipe is a smaller diameter than what I originally used back down there for doublers. So I'm going to just split it down the middle and that'll make it work. I can't uh, put enough force on it to bend it flat enough. But there's more than one way to skin a cat.
I uh, missed it. Not the location, my punch. Larry Jackson, one of our locals, came out the other day and we went through all the boxes down below and I made up a text list of what's in them now. I had pictures before, I actually think the text list is better because I can search it in my notes on my phone. So, I and I eliminated a lot of stuff. So every time I come across something, it's like, I don't need that anymore. I pull it out of the box and take it ashore, and put it in the back of my truck and tell everybody in the marine over there, hey, if there's anything in the back of my truck that you want, come and get it. So. Hopefully I'm getting some of my junk pared down. You know, it's like, you know, how many uh, grinders do you need? <laughs> and I've decided since I got it down, I'm gonna add more grommets to it. Right now I got them almost two feet apart. We're just gonna double that up. So before it was a grommet here and a grommet here, both of them were bolted. And what I'm gonna do now is one here and one in between. And I gotta put the grommets into the sail too. So I don't know if I'm gonna bring it down or try doing it up there. It's gonna be interesting either way. But that's what started me going through all my boxes down there. I was looking for grommets and I couldn't see them in a photograph. So I went through every box, but it's done now. It's good. I almost forgot about the hole. Well, I put these loops on the end of my halyards because it makes them a lot easier to pull through the sheet clutches inside the pilot house. But, you know, the other thing I figured out is I can just tie it on. I normally have to tie a series of knots onto the line to pull it through. You know, like this one, you just, you know, put a knot on there and go down, tie another one and another one. So it's braided on there and that helps the line uh, keep straight and get pulled through the sheave. But this is a hell of a lot faster. I've been finding lots of uses for that spare halyard. I gotta go up to mass soon and put a new block on, but it's a good thing because I forgot to tie the messenger line back onto the spare halyard. Hmm, mayflies from Oklahoma. I said working well at all. That's gotta be braced. Yeah, that worked. Okay, I'll keep trying. Now I'm using a number three grommet and it's great because it has teeth on it that grab the canvas. So first thing you do is you punch a three quarter inch hole and then put it in like that. And then you have a die set that will splay that top ring out and make it permanently set into there. And the trick for punching the hole is to use a dead blow hammer with a nice chunk of wood or something behind it. Those boards keep my ladder from scratching the paint, but they also are very slippery. So I bought some sticky stuff to put underneath my appliances. I'm gonna try it under my boards. If I fall, it didn't work. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, that's a beautiful end to the day. Almost done with the sail. I have to stretch it out a little bit. Our ratchet strap's gonna help me do that. Snagged in lacy jacks. Ah, oh, that's what I need to do. I need to shove it backwards. And did I say it was a beautiful sunset? A beautiful evening? Tell you what, you know, most of this life is learning to appreciate the little things. Sometimes they gotta be really small. When I start thinking that can't be done, that my life's too tough, I read Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. He found beauty while in Auschwitz. <laughs> Remarkable man. Bolt back on, so let's have a look. Put nylocks in there, fender washers, and I think that's gonna be much better. 
get her all the way up i don't think she's gonna bend much at all but that'll be another video we'll have to wait and see well that's it for this video thanks for joining us and if you want to see a long version of this video you're welcome to join us on patreon it's sorry out there with other long versions uh those are the what i start with i get comments from patrons uh good feedback i do some editing to the video sometimes even based on that feedback and that's what you're seeing if you want to be part of that you have to be a five dollar or more patreon and um that's it you get these long version videos you get uh, i'll answer comments and questions there for you for sure and uh, appreciate your support if you want to do that if you don't don't worry about it it's just a longer version of this video you can you got things to do out in your shop and if you've been out in your shop send us a photo of what you've been making what you make today doesn't matter what it is art cooking you've been out off the couch you're ahead of the game